Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to script GUIs on Roblox. Okay, so GUIs are one of the most important things on Roblox, because if you look at any of the top games, Jailbreak, Jailbreak Adopt Me, all these top games, they all have GUIs. Now, some of you might be wondering, what even is a GUI? All a GUI is, is something that pops up on the user's screen that's separate from the workspace. So a text label, a button, anything that the user can interact with or see that comes up on their screen on this panel, right? Anything that comes up there, that's what a GUI is. A GUI actually, a lot of people don't know this on Roblox, a GUI actually stands for Graphical User Interface. It's graphical, it's on your screen, it comes up for the user, and it's an interface. It's a way for the Roblox user to communicate with the game so that you can do really cool things. So there are a bunch of different types of GUIs, but all of them go under this panel right here. It's called Starter GUI. So you know how we have all the different Roblox services. We have workspace, players, lighting, replicated storage, all these. Well, all of our GUIs go under Starter GUI. So anything, any GUI that will come up, it's always located under this panel right here. So to actually get a GUI to display on the user screen, the first thing you have to do is create a screen GUI, and this is just a holder. This is just a way for you to contain all of the GUIs that will be in like one specific area. So maybe I have one screen GUI named Piano GUI for a music script. Maybe I have another screen GUI named Money or Game Pass Purchases, and this is just a way for us to organize all of our GUIs. So under this screen GUI, we can create a bunch of different objects, GUI objects. So the first one that I'm going to teach you about is the text label. Now the text label, see, we just insert it and it comes up right here on the screen. So this is how we display any type of text to the user on Roblox. So maybe if we wanted to say, you're cool, or if we wanted to say, money or if we wanted to display any kind of text to the user on their screen we do it with a text label now as you'll see right now we have so it's white it's plain we have an outline it's not really too fancy right now but what we can do is change all of these properties over here you can watch my properties video to learn a little bit more about that but a text label has all these different properties that we can change so maybe if we wanted to change the background color we go to the background color 3 property and then we use this color wheel and then we can select whatever background color we want and just by changing that it already looks so much better maybe if we want to change the font size right we could change the text size just like this we could change it to 100 or we could change it to 50 and that even looks better just like that we could even maybe we could change the text color right we can change so many of these different aspects of our GUI to make it look cool and make it appealing to our users. Now something that I think I should go over that a lot of people don't know about UIs is the sizing aspect. So you can change the size of the GUI by doing this, but it also changes a property right here. And this property has four, it actually has two values and there are two arrays which have two values inside of each of them. So that's a little bit complex, so let me get, back, let me get into that a little bit. So we have the size, and then underneath that we have the size.x, which is the width, and then we have the size.y, which is the height. Now, as you see, we have the scale value under here, and we have the offset value. Now many people, because since when you just create a GUI, it automatically sets the size to the offset value, many people just stick with this. But the problem with setting the offset value is that it sets it in pixels. So right now, the offset is 217. That means that this GUI is 217 pixels wide. Now maybe on someone's phone or someone's mobile device, 217 pixels, that takes up their whole screen. And we don't want that. What we want is for the GUI to dynamically scale based on the user's device resolution. So if we set the offset to zero, and then we want to change the scale value. So if we set the scale value to 0 0.1, this is in percents, if you're in a little bit more advanced math, right? 0 0.1 is equal to 10% of the screen. So that means that we could, if we duplicated this, we could fit 10 of these across the screen. If we were to set scale right here to one, this takes up the whole entire screen. You see, it fits perfectly. It's 100% of the screen on the width, right on the x-axis that it takes up. 
we can do the same exact thing for the y-axis. So the scale right now is zero. We don't want this offset because what if the user's device is small? So we'll set that to zero and then we can change the y scale to one. And as you'll see, this will take up 100% of the x-axis and 100% of the y-axis, which means it'll take up the whole entire screen. Now, I always, whenever I put in a GUI, it's kind of just have it now. You just want to delete that offset value and change it to scale. Because if you have offsets, it's never going to end well for your mobile users and users with different size screens. So always just make sure that you're changing the scale rather than the offset. The same thing actually goes for the position value. Now, when you go, when you actually, when you automatically, when you create an element, um, it automatically sets the position to scale instead of offset. But if you ever are doing something and you set it to offset instead, that's the same thing. It's just the position in pixels. So you always want to do it with scale so that your whole UI scales down based on the user's device. Now this is a text label, but what I went over is actually usable for any GUI element. So a frame, an image, um, you know, any, any kind of GUI element you can use this feature of scaling and offset for. Um, so let me actually show you some of the other GUI elements that Roblox has. So this was a text label, so that's how we display text. We also have a text button, and with the text button we can actually get when the button's clicked and we can get user input. So whenever we will actually, let's size this down, let's set this to 0.1 comma 0, 0.1 comma 0. Um, whenever a user clicks on the button, we can catch into that event, right? It fires that um, event, that Roblox script single, signal, and then we can catch, we can say whenever the button's clicked, do something. So let's actually create a new script under start, uh, starter GUI, or under screen GUI, and this will actually be our script for everything in this video. So let's just name this uh, GUI script. And now in here, I'm going to show you, so I don't know if you watch my other event, my other video before this on events, but I suggest watching that because we're going to hook into the mouse clicked event right here. So this is our text button. If we say script.parent.textbutton dot mouse button, right, if we just type mouse, these are all the different things that we can get only on the text button. So we can get when someone clicks the button, we can get when a mouse goes down, when the mouse goes up, we can get when they use the mouse button too, when the mouse enters, when the mouse leaves. All of these things are mainly, or I mean, maybe not these bottom ones, but the top ones anyway, they're specific to the text button. So if we want to get whenever the player clicks, we hook into this mouse button, mouse button one clicked event, and then we connect that to a function. And then, whoops, just like this function and then in here we do whatever code we want when the player clicks the button so let's say we want to print you clicked the button right any code that's in here it'll run when they click that text button so if we go into the game we can test this out right now actually all we have to do is click on the button and as you'll see in the console it'll say you click the button now something else that I didn't mention before is if you're ever going to make a script to script these GUIs, they have to be a local script because local script means it only runs on your client and these GUIs only come up for that specific player. So you always want to use a local script instead of a server script because you're only controlling the GUIs for that player. You're not controlling it for every player in the game. So that's text buttons, but we also have some other GUI elements. So we could look at the frame. And the frame is actually very con uh, very similar to the screen GUI, except it has background properties and we can size it. So once again, let's just get in the habit of setting that size, right? We'll do the scale instead of the offset. Um, and a frame is usually what you'll use to contain elements. So maybe I want to have a game pass UI. What I would do is I'd change the properties of the frame. Maybe I could say, background transparency I could do 0.5 I could set the color to a little darker and then I could put my elements my my close button inside of here so I could put a text button and this could be our close button right so this goes in the top corner and we type close so we can do when a player clicks it closes the frame but this is an easy way to organize all of your elements because if we resize this it automatically if we have this set to if we have the sizing set properly, if we have the sizing set to scale mode, 
then what it'll do is it'll resize the elements with it. So if we make this frame super small, it'll resize all of the elements inside of it to be super small. Also, if we set the visible property, if we make a whole frame invisible, it'll set all the objects underneath of it into invisible so we can't see it. So this is a great way to organize our GUI elements just so that we don't have to worry about going in and saying set the size of this, set the size of this. If all the elements are related and they're all supposed to be in like a pop-up type thing, you just do this under a frame and Roblox makes it so easy just by checking off this visible property in there. Now we can also do images, uh, so if we, I'm sure you're familiar with decals, which we can do in the workspace, um, but we also have images that are we can use for the GUIs. So let's create an image label, we get in the habit once again, we always got to size this to like that, and we can basically anything, we can set the image that goes inside of here to any decal ID on Roblox. So right now it's just the placeholder image, but maybe if I was to search in images and I was to search for maybe a Dominus, right? An image of a Dominus. What I could do is I could insert the image to my base plate and don't worry, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna grab this and we can grab the texture right here, this ID. All we have to do is copy the numbers right here We'll take that back out of the base plate. And now if we paste it in to this right here where it says image, if we paste that number in, you'll see now we have a visual representation on our screen of the Dominus. But as you'll see, it looks a little bit distorted. I mean, this image is like a texture anyway, so it doesn't look 100% right. But if we scale this image label all the way out, it looks like it's stretching, and we don't want that. So what I always do for my image labels, and this is up to you, a property that you can actually change is the scale type. And right now it's set to stretch, but I like to set it to fit so that the image always fits inside of the image label. So if I make it super small, it'll still be a square. And if I make it super big, no matter how big I resize this label, it'll always stay the same shape and it's not gonna actually stretch. Uh, and we can also set the background transparency too to make it so you don't have that white on the edge and you can just make your images in your game. Uh, so the final GUI object that I'm gonna show you today is the image button. And this is very, very, very similar to the button and to the image. It's a combination of the two actually. So all we have to do is we can set an image, right? We can set that image we had before, but this time we can actually hook into the clicked event. So right here where we have script.parent.textbutton.mouseButton one click, we can do the same thing for the image button. We can say script.parent.imageButton.mouseButton one click and it'll still work because it's a button and an image at the same time. It's a button that displays an image. So if we click on it, you'll see, you click the button just as it did over here with the money one. So GUIs are really, really interesting. You can design them however you'd like to with all those properties and use all these different elements to make the perfect game on Roblox. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the pastebin link with all the code in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.